I, 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 I know you're saying that you miss those times, and I get it, but, like, is it sustainable? Like, if you were still at 57, surviving on $40 gigs, would you still enjoy it, do you think? If I wasn't doing blow, listen, some people's priorities are some people's priorities. I look at it for the pure bottom line. Everything has a square root, correct? Mm -hmm. You're on stage. You're living in Los Angeles, and you're working at your dream. You're not Kevin Hart. Who cares? You're not Dave Chappelle, A46. You're not Joe Rogan. You're not Mark Marin. You're not. It doesn't matter. You're still in the fucking game, and your dream is still alive. Okay, so let's say this pandemic came along and took the wind out of your sails, and you couldn't pay rent for a few months, and you go to b back to Boston or back to Atlanta or back to Philadelphia or back to Mexico, does that make you less of a comic? No. You're still a comic. You just have to adjust to your surroundings now. So how am I going to make it as a local comic? Oh, shit, look at that bar in the corner. They do a sports night on Wednesday. Let me go talk to them. You got to go back to the basics. Boom, you go back to the basics. Yo, what's good? And then you have three clubs. So you got to find one of the three clubs. Listen, I'm a headliner. You and I both know it. You saw me in the longest yard. You saw me, whatever. What if what if I came in here four nights a week and emceed for you? And I promised to just do new material. I'm not here to destroy the feature. But at least you have you give your show some, you know, and I could work with the open micers. You know, that that you know, all shit like that. That all you gotta works. adapt. You gotta adapt. Go to your radio station. How you doing? My name is Joey Diaz. Uh I'm not looking for money. I'm looking to come in as an intern. You Joey Diaz from the movie? Yeah, why do you want to come in as an intern? Because I can't go on the road and I got nothing else going on. I moved back to be close to my fucking dead uncle. I love him, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, whatever your situation is, you're always going to be a comic. You move to the Philippines, you're cutting pigeon heads off in the daytime, but at night you're doing comedy in between fucking karaoke people. Will you figure it out? If you really love doing what you're doing, you figure it out. Let's say you've come out of here and you've exhausted all your avenues. And now you move back to wherever the fuck you're from. And you get a day job, and it may be something that you want, maybe something that you don't like, but you're just paying the bills. You've cut your rent down low. You're back home, you know, wherever the fuck you're from. The rents are low somewhere in Ohio or Milwaukee. I don't know where you're from, you know. You, comedy is great at that level because you're going to get top dollar at night. So you're going to make a couple hundred a week extra and get your day job. It never ends. You never stop being a comic. You don't quit comedy because you didn't get a TV show. That means you didn't love it. You didn't love it from day one. You got to love this. You got to love that part of it. Yes, I love getting a nice check and going on the road for a weekend. But I'm telling you, Rodrigo, if I knew what I knew now, I'd keep it to that level. Get a tremendous day job where I made great money. I, I didn't have to go into 11 and I could do all that shit. Yeah, there's motherfuckers that are doing that shit now. They do it now. When I lived in Denver, there was a dude who was an attorney. One of the funniest fucking black dudes you ever saw in your life. You couldn't get this guy on the road. People begged this guy to go on the road. His day job paid so much and his wife loved him so much and his kids, he couldn't go on the road. But he would be busted. He would come out and throw 20 minutes of heat, give him a breather, and then he'd go, you white motherfuckers like impersonations. <laughs> <laughs> and it'd be in Denver. And they'd go, yeah. And he'd go, all right, give me a minute. Let me prepare. And he'd turn around, and you'd see him do something. <laughs> and he'd turn back around as Vito Corleone. Black dude. Same haircut like Vito and the Godfather. And he'd come out and go, this is my impersonation of the Godfather. You ready? And he'd come out and go, the dentist fucked up my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and he would hold his face, and he, just like Vito. He goes, this is my, I mean, he would just torment him. 
I still remember his jokes. He was like, I used to watch him. I go, this guy's great. And I asked people, what's the problem with this guy? I mean, he would wear an $800 suit on stage. Like Armani suits and custom-made suits. Brownies and shit. Decked out shoes. And I go, why don't you go on the road, bro? Take me on the road with you. I want to learn from you. He's like, fuck <laughs> that. I'm not sleeping on no fucking hotel bed. You know, you learn from those guys. You team up with those guys. So don't think just because... There's guys in little small pockets. I've said this a million times on this podcast. They're the 20th times funnier than I am. They just never wanted to come to L.A. Somewhere along the line. I've seen it, man. got crossed. I've seen it. Like You've seen it. I've seen it. I don't know if you know who this guy is. Frank Del Pizzo, an older man. He's been around forever. And then uh, he was working the club that we went to go. It's that Captain Brian's, the other club he had before he had off the hook. And... uh He's like, yeah, guys, whatever, guys. And like, you know, giving him a, a Gandolfini impression because he's Italian and shit. He's all loving it. And then he's all at the, and then uh, Philippe is all hit, hits him up. He's all, you, you want to do a spot? He's all, I'll host that motherfucker. And we're just like, yeah. you know, you don't think, you know what I mean? He's like, it looks like a dad kind of, you know what I mean? The golfs and shit. But that motherfucker went up there and hosted, dude, and he destroyed the fucking oh, room. He destroyed the room. He destroyed the fucking room. If I room. quit tomorrow and dude. moved into a little suburb and just went to a little B room. On Fridays and Saturday, with no care in the world, no industry, I've already gone through the mill. I will light up features. <laughs> I will have feature acts quitting. I will have, there'll be the strongest surge of feature acts you've ever seen in your life. Because after four days of following me at that level, you definitely improve as a feature. Five day, five shows, through five shows. Yeah, you gotta shows, adjust. With no cares in the world, 10 minutes. Ooh, loose. I've already, <laughs> I've already hosted for Mitzi Shore, so you're not going to do nothing to me. That small town in Indiana, they're not going to do nothing to me that I moved to. But Duke of Kentucky, what are they going to do to me? Shoot me? I'm going to go up there and just lay it out for 10 minutes. That feature is going to be knocking on his boots because I know I would. At that, at that level, four years, ooh, you're still knocking on your boots. You still get thrown out if they go, come into the stage. <laughs> Lee Swat, this motherfucker just cracked. <laughs> I, I know, hate you, man, but it's true. When he told me the story, I already knew. I, I'm a comic. I know how to crack a comic right before they go on stage. That's the easiest thing to do. But you can't be doing that shit to people because then people start doing it to you. <laughs> it comes around, goes around. So you got to be careful when you crack a comedian before he goes on stage.